Um, in this video, I want to talk about the deflate inflate algorithm. Uh, a little while back, um, looking at you know something like this uh, PHP type script up here, I kind of challenged myself to want to be able to decode it by hand or like on paper. Um, I know it's kind of crazy, but that's the kind of stuff that interests me. So I had to learn about the inflate algorithm, which is this uh, RFC 1951 here. Um, you know, for reference, I read through this. Uh, it, it was still kind of confusing though. RFCs aren't always easy. Um, TLDR though for deflate, it's uh, pretty much just Huffman encoding with uh, LZ77 for compression. Um, so I'm going to talk about those things and I'm going to talk about a couple of tools that you can use to inspect and even interact with uh, the algorithm. Uh, the interaction one is a tool that I made. Um, so let's first of all talk about Huffman encoding. Um, which you can find in section 3.2 of the RFC. Um, I actually have it on 3.2 right now. This is a Huffman tree here. Um, but let's say you have the text uh, up above here like this, these A, B, C's, and D's. Um, in ASCII, this is the binary that we're going to have, which is a bit of binary. Uh, and it's also, e each character is represented by a byte which may not be super interesting, but in Huffman coding, that's not an assumption that we can make. There's not a fixed offset or a fixed amount of ones and zeros for each character or token or what have you, um, which is sort of interesting, but what's more interesting is that there's no stop codes or any kind of uh, token for separating the characters. So let's uh, take a look at an analysis of some of the characters we have up here. Um, if we count the A's, B's, C's, and D's, uh, we'll notice there's a lot more B's than the rest, and then A's is a close second, and then there's not that many C's and D's. Um, so if you had to make little tokens, ones and zeros tokens, for each of the characters, you're probably going to want to make the characters that are the most frequent being the least bits, um, and then the characters that are the least frequent, like say if you see them hardly at all, you can afford to make them a longer bit pattern because you're not going to see them that much anyway, so it's not going to take up that much space. Um, and a simple example of that is uh, here's here's some Huffman codes for those four characters. Uh, a is 0, 0, B is 1, C is 0, 1, 1, and D is 0, 1, 0, which I, I completely lifted right off of uh, the RFC here. Um, but the cool thing is, uh, being that you don't need a separating uh, token, uh, if you just start at the beginning of the ones and zeros, you know that you're at the end of a character just based on how these tokens are created. Uh, so say you see zero, zero. Um, well, you start at the first zero, and it, it, if you see another zero, it can only be an A, because here the B doesn't start with a zero, C it does start with a zero, but the next character is a one, and same on with D. Um, so that's, that's how that's represented. Also, say like a B, uh, say you're looking at some binary and you see a 1, you're starting at a 1, um, well, you're done. Uh, it, it, it doesn't matter what the next character is, being that B is the only one that starts with the 1. If you see another 1 after this, it has to be another B. If you see a 0 after this, it has to be a sort of a different character other than a B. It's elegant. It's really, really cool. Um, so if we were to encode those characters, uh, this is the 1s and zeros that we'd have. For these characters up here. Um, although there would be a little bit of overhead, you do have to define what the table looks like. It's not a given, depending on how many characters or even tokens you have. Um, you know, you're going to have different codes for your different characters or tokens um, because algorithms and shit, you know? Um, so even though we went over Huffman encoding, uh, what I'm doing with the deflate inflate algorithm, uh, I don't really have to think about the Huffman coding part of it. I use a, a, an implementation of the deflate algorithm that has a fixed Huffman coding table, so you don't have to generate it yourself. That is one configuration of the deflate algorithm that you can use. So next we'll talk about the LZ77 algorithm. Uh, this one is actually even more intuitive to understand. Uh, the idea behind this is when you're looking at a lot of uh, data or text or whatever, there's going to be repetitions like of words, of characters, or even phrases or sentences even. Um, and what you do is you keep track of those repetitions and you can just, as a placeholder, say once you get to that repetition, instead of spelling it out all the way again, so to speak, you just say, oh, it's that one little token, you know, that you have your overhead for. Um, so anyway, here's, here's our A's and B's and C's and D's again. Um, and we're going to look at what 
what this looks like uh, using some of our inspections. So uh, this is just a quick PHP one-liner to encode this, this data um, in a hex binary format for that character compressed. So I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to echo it out, and I'm going to pipe this to my favorite hex dumper, and in this case, editor in a way. And I'm going to redirect it to a file. I'm going to call it compress. There you go. And I'm going to use one of my favorite inspection tools uh, written by Adler himself. Uh, it's called InfGem. And I'm going to point it at compressed. And this is this output that we get here. Um, so I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. And anyway, yeah, if, if you want to use his tool, it sits on GitHub. Anyway, so here's the, the original string of characters. This is what's going on here. We have our first few characters, and then there's actually repetition. Um, this is our first length distance pair. This is a, the type of token for how to encode those repetitions. So what it means is the, the first of the subset of numbers is the length, and the second number is the distance. So what it means is the next few characters is going to be three characters long, and we go back one character to find what that's going to be. So going back one character is the B. Repeat the B three times. That's what's happening there. And then, you know, we're just doing some literal characters here because there's no repetitions. And then we get to our next uh, length distance pair. So um, the, the length of the next few characters is going to be nine characters. And then we go back a distance of two, uh, which means one, two, we have BA. And we repeat that nine times. And I know that sounds kind of weird uh, because it's not divisible, but what it really means is BA, 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 BA. And for the ninth one, we just kind of repeat um, again as if there were to be like 10 or whatever. Um, hope that makes sense. Uh, so that's kind of cool. That's that's what we're seeing here. We see the literal. We see the when it says match down here. That's just a token for length distance pair. Some more literals, and another token for length distance pair. And internally, there's also a token for an end code, so it knows that it's done. So now I'm going to talk about um, my tool. You can kind of do it in the other way. You can define your own length distance pairs, and it'll give you the encoded data. Um, so I'm going to do it differently. Uh, but I mean, so in this case, I do the first part the same, and we have our little literals here. And then I'm going to say a length the distance pair of 5, 2, meaning five characters, and go back two to find them. So we have those five characters with the B, A, B, A, B. And then at this point, we're going to do another length distance pair. Um, it's four characters, and actually I left out a A, B there. It's going to be four characters, and you just go back two in this case, this AB, to, to get those. So I'm going to go ahead and run uplate. And it's kind of clunky. The UX is bad, whatever. I'm probably going to be the only one that uses this tool. But you just type one token at a time, which it could be a literal character. It could be even hex escaped. Or it could be a length distance pair. And uh, also, when you're done, you type EOF for your encode. So I'm going to start typing the first few bits of this. Um, a, B, C, and so on. And now we have our length distance pair type as such. And you'll notice in the current token up here, it shows that. And we even have what a, a running bit of the data, what it should be so far. Um, so it makes it kind of useful. Um, and I'll start typing my next tokens. And then I'll do this length distance pair. And then finally, this length distance pair. And I'll do our EOF. And here is our data here. Copy that. And actually, I don't really have to copy it. It's the same as this, right? Um, but you'll notice that this compressed version is um, a little bit longer than the one that deflate will actually do for you. Because, uh, you know, there's different, there's more than one way to slice and dice how to do your length distance pairs. And the deflate algorithm knows how to do it because algorithms and shit, you know. Um, so if you're just trying to think of it your own way, like I did with my tool uflate, you're probably going to end up with a result that's uh, more data and not as compressed. Um, and, and just to show as a proof of concept here, um, these, these are... Uh, representations of def deflating this, this hex data for both of those. 
Um, in this case, this is the first one that the deflate algorithm picks, and you see it's our original string. And then mine, that is just a little, like, you know, one byte longer, uh, but it's the exact same data, just to show that that works. It's not going to be different data when you decompress it. Uh, um, I, I pretty much love any kind of technology that doesn't have the one-to-one -one, uh, ratios between the abstraction and the lower level. Um, I, I really love that. Um, so let's go to another example, though. Um, call this one, ha, 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 deflate is so funny. <laughs> okay, so that's the text we're going to encode. I'm going to go ahead and get our ASCII hex for the, the binary of it. And we'll echo that out um, right there. Type it to our hex editor to make it binary. And then we'll output it to a file called funny. And then let's see what infgen does with it. So it says ha, and then we're going to have three more characters go two back. So it, two back is starting with H, which would be A-H-A for those three characters. So that would be one way of saying ha ha or ha ha ha. And then just literally deflate is so funny. Um, so this is the string, and this is kind of a way to represent it. Um, there's another way to do that. Let's try ha for two deflate is so funny. So um, in this case, the, the, the four means there's going to be four characters after ha, and then we go back two characters to find what we're repeating. So ha, and then go back two characters, which is ha, repeat four characters worth. So ha, ha, the plate is so funny. Um, so let's go ahead and run you plate on that. Say ha, oh, let's say h, a, and then four, two. And there's our ha, 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 space. We have a result. Here's our compressed data for it. It's going to be a little bit slightly different than the, the way that deflate tries to do it. Um, so this is the, the way that deflate tries to do it here. And this is, or actually, this is the way that I did it right here, the 4-2. And this was the way that deflate tried to do it. Notice it's a, a character longer, or a byte longer. And show proof of concept. So this first one here is deflate's version, and the second one here is my version. And you notice the text is the same, ha ha ha, deflate is so funny. So the algorithm is not perfect. Um, the cool thing is sometimes you can find a way to get even better compression by getting in the middle of the process, doing it your way. Uh, this tool is called uflate because it's uh, deflate your way, right? You can do it how you want to do it. And there might be some cool applications for this. I mean, for me, I just like to get in the middle of things. I only really ever care about the technology and the, the lower levels and the stuff you can do in the lower levels that you can't do in the abstraction. Meaning in the abstraction, you just give it some data and it uses algorithms and it's helping encoding and it's LSE 77 and it just kind of does it for you. It, it assumes and tries to pick the best way to do it. And almost always it's gonna be right, actually. This is a really, really, really weird edge case, actually. Um, in, in this case, if we had the ha 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 towards the middle or end of the string, um, even if we used uh, the 4-2 encoding here, it actually ends up being, uh, it well, not that it ends up being longer, it so happens that deflate will choose the 4-2 over the 3-2, just for whatever reason, when it's at the beginning, uh, deflate likes to choose 3-2 instead of 4-2. I, I, I don't honestly know why, it's kind of interesting, but this is, this is why I like going below the abstractions. Um, and, and real quick, just as an aside before I finish here, um, as far as the Huffman encoding, because um, I kind of forgot to point it out, um, these are the, the tables, the Huffman encoding tables, uh, for all the different tokens of length distance pairs. So I kind of didn't explain how the two relate, you know, they combine both algorithms, but those uh, length distance pairs and literal characters are all tokens, uh, Huffman encoded tokens. So say I had the character A or a length distance pair of, you know, four or two, uh, those are all encoded in binary with Huffman encoding. And this table is the pre-can table for the, Huff, the best, in general, Huffman encoding that you're going to be able to use for general purposes. Um, you can do deflate and have it generate its own Huffman table, uh, Huffman code table, and it might be a little bit better uh, or more efficient than this one. Um, but, you know, for my purposes, I don't want to fuck around with that, so I just use the pre canned one. I mean, it's already hard enough. Uh, I mean... Just, just this right here, 
uh, I, I didn't want to have to understand like how to generate a really good Huffman encoding table. This is already hard enough. Like when you make your uh, Huffman codes, the, the ones and zeros or the, the bit streams for your tokens aren't even like in, in order sometimes. In fact, most of the times they're in reverse. I have these arrows pointing this way, uh, but not all the fields are in reverse. Some of them are in order. It gets really confusing. But um, anyway, that's uh, Huffman encoding. That's LZ77 in combination for the deflate algorithm and even a couple of tools to inspect and manipulate.